Elizabeth, when the sadness has a face. The story of today is uh, comes from this book, Underground America. It has several stories about people that were undocumented when they were here in the United States. But today we will talk about Elizabeth. Elizabeth comes from Bolivia, exactly for from the city named La Paz. She comes from a middle class family and uh, her mom was a nurse, her father was an accountant. She got married when she was 17. So she had three kids. The first two were normal births, but the third one was really, really special because the doctors told her that it would be really, really hard for her to get pregnant again. It was a girl, but with the girl arrived the complications with her husband. Her husband abandoned her, abandoned her with the three kids. She was alone with 20 years old to face the world for herself. So she was thinking what I can do. So she started to learn English in the American Bolivian Center. It's an institute that works side by side with the Embassy of the United States, where people can learn English about the culture of the United States, find information to how to get a scholarship in the United States. So she was there learning English. And when she finished, she was asked uh, to start to teach in the institute. One day, her little daughter started to have bad symptoms. It seems like she was starting to have arthritis, pain in her hands, in her legs, in her arms, and Elizabeth was really concerned. She went to all the doctors you can imagine, and one day her boss told her, what's, what's wrong with you? Because I see you really uh, nervous, and she told her about her daughter. Her boss said, you know what? I'm very close friend with the first lady of Bolivia. Here, I give you my card and explain her your case, and I'm sure she will be able to help you. Elizabeth went to a meeting with the first lady, and she said, okay, I will help you. I will pay six months in the best hospital of La Paz. After four months, Elizabeth realized, okay, in two more months, this help from the first lady will end. So I need more money. And not just that, I need to find a cure. Maybe in the United States, there is a cure for my daughter. I need to go there to send money so she can continue her treatment while I can uh, search for the cure for my daughter. October 2003, Elizabeth arrived to my She found uh, her boss friend, Lawrence. He picked her up from the airport and brought her to the church, offered her a place where to sleep with food. He was telling her that in the library, she was able to get internet. She can start to make her research. After three weeks, Elizabeth found a hospital in Maryland. The trip to Maryland had several uh, problems. The Elizabeth got sick. She was throwing up and not feeling good. She rent uh, a hotel. The manager of the hotel told her you must try to find somewhere else go to a hospital but the guy allowed her to stay in the hotel for almost three weeks one of the receptionists of the hotel told her my mom is renting a room in her house and I, it will be really cheap for you so elizabeth went to the house of this lady the family always make parties any time of the day men enter so she was so she called her mom and her sister said of a friend of a friend of a friend in new jersey elizabeth called this guy so he picked her from from the bus station in in new york i gave her a, a room where she has her own bathroom but the things change so she asked to this guy can i use your computer and your internet because i need to make a research and he said okay yes he came to the bedroom with a glass with some soda and wine after a few minutes she started to feel dizzy couldn't even move her legs or her arms he raped her Elizabeth uh, told the guy, you know why, we'll go to the police. But the guy told her, you don't have a place where to live. You don't have anybody here. I'm a citizen. I have my house. Who will be living you? So she decided to stay. She was in that house receiving beatings from this guy. December the 28th, Elizabeth's birthday. He said, okay, I will take you to have dinner with me. But Elizabeth said no, because I want to wait for the call from my family. He went out and when he came back, he tried to rape her again, insulting her, kicking her in the leg. And she was begging for her life. So Elizabeth survived. January the 2nd, Elizabeth had a job in McDonald's and her boss saw all the bruises that she has in all her body. So she called the police and the police took her to a shelter, the visa. She only had three months to stay in the country. A social worker in the shelter contacted a lawyer and the lawyer told her it's better that you right now return to Bolivia. You are most emotionally broken. Elizabeth says, no, I cannot come back to Bolivia. I will do it by myself. She filled out all the documents. She paid a money order. But 
that and she asked a lady in the shelter can I put your address so if the immigration want to send me something you can let me know lost the track of the people and that's what happened so she contacted her boss in Bolivia she found another person from the Mormon church there in New Jersey and she said it would be better for you if you go to Virginia because in Virginia you have an embassy Elizabeth decided to go to Virginia. In March of 2004, she rented a room very close to other people from Bolivia. Somebody contacted her with a lady who used to clean houses, so Elizabeth started to clean houses and Elizabeth started to work 12 hours. Work she was able to send to Bolivia $200. Uh, the mom could take her daughter to the therapy in 2005. Elizabeth got a job in an Italian cafe. It was a very good job for her and she received very good tips so she was able to send more money to Bolivia, a better quality of life for herself and also for her family in Bolivia. Also, go to the library and to make research for her daughter. She found a hospital in Miami, so she went. When she was in her way to Miami, the police entered to the bus, gave the passport, and when the police reviewed her passport, they realized that she was, her visa was expired. And Elizabeth explained that, uh, that she was going out to Miami because she needed to have information for her daughter. So they helped her and let her go. 2006, Elizabeth hired a lawyer and went to court. She went with all her documents, the papers from her daughter there. But the lawyer said, we will say that you have a boyfriend and that you will get married soon with him. And, and that's it. So the judge accept that excuse she must appear in the in the courtroom again on january of 2007 so she find a new job her boss was really good with her she was actually the the personal assistant at the whole family she was being the nanny for the boss kids driving here and there she was able to buy a car january 2007 she uh, contacted her lawyer and told him that he was able to open uh, the letter the day that you must appear in the court is generally the 20th so uh, sadly when the lawyer sent her the papers it said january the second so she missed it april the 9th when she was uh, driving her car she was stopped by the police because the license uh plate was suspended in the computer said they must deport her april the 12th 2007 hamptons road federal detention center she decided to write different letters to everybody to the judge to the lawyer in order to to receive help and she realized that nobody listened when you are inside of a detention center uh, when she was there she decided not to call to anybody in her house because she thought it would be really hard for my family to find out that I am in jail July 2007 Elizabeth was deported to Bolivia she returned with the hands completely empty nobody in her family knows all the things that she passed through uh, now Elizabeth is again working for the American Bolivian Center as a teacher. She's trying right now to no hold grudges against anybody. Well, that was the case of Elizabeth. The only connection that I was able to find is that the bad treatment of the immigrants pass through when they come here to the United States. I was thinking about, about the game that we made in the Model 7, if I'm not wrong. I don't have any connection with the ESL classes because she already spoke English when she came here. She was a teacher. That was not her case per se. And she stayed in the country hiding, uh, but continue working, paying taxes, exactly like like, like the dreamers. They, they, they don't even have a regular immigration status. I thank you for listening to, to the story of Elizabeth. There is so much things that we can do for the immigrants and me, uh, I, myself, as an immigrant, I can tell you sometimes people try to take advantage of us, but we must be strong and resilient. That's all. Thank you for watching.